Jumping along, one of the things that's been real important for us has been partnering early. So Genzyme is our partner for MPS1 and Aldurazyme. Back when we did the deal, 1998, um, frankly, Biomarin was running out of money. We did not have a commercial infrastructure. We didn't even really know what that was. We were lucky enough to do the deal with Genzyme, and it's worked out well. It's been a lot of drama of late, but regardless, um, Genzyme has been important to our future. And frankly, without Genzyme as a partner, we wouldn't be here today. We did a deal with Daiichi and on Kuvan, and we unlicensed the te technology, and Dan will speak more to that. But that enabled a very fast and quick and efficient preclinical package that then we put right into the clinic and move forward briskly on. So Dan will speak to that. But the essence of that was we manage risk reasonably well at Biomarin. We manage it by talking about it and assuming things that others wouldn't necessarily assume. So without getting into the details, I'll leave that to Dan. We weren't afraid of certain amount of risk, and that's actually one of the ingredients to the recipe of success, in my humble opinion. And then Mark, Mark Serono, a uh, little known fact is in May 2005, we were just a few months from being a going concern in real trouble. We did the deal with Merck Serono mostly because we needed the financing to sustain ourselves. Otherwise, we probably would have been gone. With respect to Genzyme in the maroon boxes, you know, we did the deal early that I alluded to. Product got approved in 2003, and we rejiggered the deal in 2008. Well, let me tell you the story behind the story. You know, you've heard, you've heard uh, when a team comes together, a new joint venture, forming, storming, norming, and then performing. Well, that's exactly how you could draw that line from 98 through 2008. And there's been a little bit of storming here lately with the Sanofi business, and John's laughing over there because we've had some good discussions around the matter. Um, but that's one of the issues we have to deal with. Um, and it's something that I think the smaller companies in the audience, when you do do your partnering, uh, need to be ready for. What we really got from the Genzyme relationship among uh, other than a successful product, and other than a lot of grief and a loss of hair, um, was a worldwide commercial inf infrastructure that we built. And we, we went to school on Genzyme. We were taught and we watched and we listened. And, and we built our own infrastructure now that sells Naglozyme, our second product, worldwide. Matt back there was one of the commercial heads at Biomarin at the time, and so he knows this story full well. And he, too, is responsible for Biomarin's success in large part. On the acquiring front, this is one of those peaks and valley parts. On the acquiring front, we lost our way a bit, in my, again, in my opinion. And I might be speaking a little bit of out of school, but probably not. We acquired a uh, prednisolone sulfate grape-flavored syrup from Metasys and a 60-person sales force, because we thought that by bringing that product in would give, give us some revenue, help out the balance sheet, then we'd have a ready-made sales force for the launch of Naglozyme. It didn't really work out that way. And we had some issues. One of the issues was is it was genericized on a 505B2 nine months after we acquired the product. To make a long story short, it was almost a death blow to Biomarin. And had we not been able to divest in 06, again, we might not be here today. So there's similar stories like this, again, in the Genentech analogy that I'd be happy to share on one-on-one. -on -one. I don't feel I can really talk about it right here. But I will give you a hint that had it not been for prion disease, 
there would have never ever been a Genentech. So if you'd like to hear the rest of that story, make sure you introduce yourself to me. On scale up in manufacturing, we have a facility that we just expanded. We make our enzymes there. It's in Novato, California. And with approval of qualification lots at FDA later this year, we'll have the ability to make a billion dollars worth of protein uh, in that facility. We're very proud of our capabilities here. And a lot of what we do and who we are, again, come from know-how generated at Genentech in the early days. Dr. Robert Baffey, he's our executive vice president, just gave a talk here recently. And one of his messages in terms of manufacturing know-how that I think we'll talk about more on Friday in a panel is the following. I won't read it to you, but it really, really matters. So to summarize, I don't know if you caught it, but on that timeline slide where I showed three and a quarter years and five and five and a quarter for the development times. Um, it's no longer good enough in our world going future, in, my, in the future, in my humble opinion, uh, to just be fast. And we've learned that a bit of a hard way at Biomarin. You have to, sure, be brisk with your development. You have to get the drugs out there for the people who need them. But you also have to do them in the context of making them a success down the road. And if you spend more time, perhaps even more dollars, and yes, more time to develop and to fill in the development picture a little more thoroughly, that might lead to a more successful launch of the product and therefore add to the sustainability of your company and then allow you to then do more of those products that you'd love to do in the early pipeline. So on that timeline side, at the top, it said hard work, smart, and some luck. And I know that's not a magical formula or recipe, but they are some key ingredients. So I'll leave that with you. I think you'll see that if you study all the companies in our space, as we were talking about earlier, Centacore among them, um, you can actually see all of those things having been occurred. And, 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 and they exist everywhere you look. The unfortunate thing about the future that I personally am worried about is, is look what happened to the G company on the East Coast and look what happened to the G company on the West Coast. They're both wholly owned subsidiaries of bigger pharma. So the magic and the passion that the smaller companies generate and engender and propagate need to be sustained if we're gonna continue the winning for formula for orphan disease. And I'm not sure what will happen over the next 10 years. Again, because of the convergence of many pressures. Thank you for your attention.